So I'd just like to give a quick shout out to Radio C, to Fabiano and Alistair over there. Thank you very much for sending me out these DYS XS 20 as for review. Um, and also to Mike over at Hobby RC. These are two UK based companies that have both excellent prices, but most importantly to me, fantastic customer services. So if you get a chance, please do go over and check those guys out. So what we have here are the new uh, DYS, or reasonably new DYS uh, SE 2205. Um, this is the 2550 kV Pro version. Um, I guess these are DYS's kind of answer to the Emacs, um, the red bottom series, the 23 and 2600 kV. These are actually off of my quad. These these ones I have here. I mean, I've had these on for for. A, pretty decent time been through a lot of crashes really hard wearing been really happy with these motors um, this is actually the red bottom just before that you can see here I mean just make that out racing edition these are the 2205 2300 kV uh, kind of one thousand gram uh, thrust output um, they were just the, these were released just before they decided to give them the lick of red paint but I've been really happy with those um, and and you know even now uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super impressed how well they've held up how well the bearings have held up which is a, a really important one um, they're still nice and smooth and um, yeah they, they've been great so yeah this is kind of DYS's this DYS's answer to that um, and so far, um, I, I've I'm kind of I've got mixed feelings about these motors. Um, I've uh, the reason I haven't posted for a little while is I, you know in order to review this stuff, I really needed to have some time um, taking this out and flying it and and uh, you know getting some packs through it um, so that we can see how they perform. Um, there's things I really uh, quite like about this motor, so. You know, it's roughly the same weight. Um, there's not too much in difference. You can see they're roughly the same um, kind of specs as well. The 2205, 2550. So this is kind of the equivalent to the 2600, um, which will be good on five. Uh, you know, I'm running it on five inch props, but it'll certainly be popular with the four inch props for the 180s. Um, a couple of things I really like about them, they've got, they've got the hollow shaft, um, which has you know a real nice strength advantage, um, which is which is great. And um, so far, uh, I've been impressed with that in terms of their durability. Um, one of the nice things about having a hollow shaft, of course, is that they can do away, and they have done away with the C clip. So what you now have is a, uh, a small bolt that will screw into there, with a washer that just touches the inner race of that lower ball bearing. Um, which is great. That makes them really serviceable, easy to clean out. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that idea. Um, this is the Pro. Uh, you can see the little Pro model. Um, and the only difference between the Pro and the uh, standard editions, um, in terms of spec and uh, how they perform, it will be exactly the same. The only difference here is that they have these uh, solder tabs um, and you know you may like them you may not um, in terms of being able to quickly replace one at a race um, and these are the race edition I can see there is definitely advantages to uh, having solder tabs it will make it very quick to get this off and on um, so yeah there's the, there's a thing I'm not sure how I feel about the gold color it's kind of a weird it's a weird gold color it's, it's kind of very washed out kind of I don't know how to describe it. It's um, it's not a, not a particularly appealing gold colour. It's kind of C3PO gold. I actually maybe I made it sound cool by saying that. Um, but I'm yeah I'm I'm kind of in in two minds about whether I like the the finish of these uh, this this pro version. Um, you can see here in terms of the uh, they all seem to be nicely balanced, and you can actually see if I rotate this round some of the gunk that's in there that's that's used to to help balance these motors at the factory, um, and they certainly seem to spin uh, nice and vibration free um, as they should. Um, if I angle them just right, you can kind of get an idea of the distance from the magnet to the stators. Um, you can kind of see there and it's it's not bad it's pretty close um, I would say it's not quite as close there you go you see on that lower section you can see you see the kind of gap we're talking about there um, and obviously the closer those magnets can be to the the status the, the, the you know the, the more power the, more, the better the efficiency 
Um, and yeah, it's not bad. I, I would say, to be honest with you, the Emacs motors, um, the gap between these, you can see is really tight. Um, and that shows that, you know, in terms of their their manufacturing tolerances, that the Emacs have really got it nailed. Um, and again, even though these are old and they've had lots of crashes now, um, they're still very straight, very true. And those magnets, despite being insanely close, there's no rubbing. Um, they've really lasted uh, very well. Again, you can see on the Emacs the, the kind of the balancing goop that they put in there. Um, but yeah, the, the gaps are slightly larger on this. The other thing I've noticed in flight is these do come down warmer. Um, don't necessarily assume that just because these have these huge open cavities that they're going to cool better uh, than the Emacs ones, for instance, which have smaller cavities. Um, what you've got to remember is Emacs have actually worked on a, a, a fin design here which actually actively cools, and these are the MT cooling series, does a great job of pulling or, or pushing air uh, in one direction through the motor and these have always done you know these have always come down cool and, and, and I've been very impressed with with the efficiency the power and, and how cool they run these DYS however I have noticed them coming down a little warmer um, despite those uh, as I said these huge cavities they don't you know actually do anything in the way of actively trying to pull air through the motor um, so, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm kind of in two minds. If I was to put these up against the Emacs, I would, to be honest with you, I think I would, I would probably still say the Emacs is my is my favourite choice. Um, one of the other things that has really annoyed me with these is um, uh, one of the four that I got sent um, sent over. Um, uh, this is one of them actually has a tiny bit of play in the shaft um, and holding the motor like this you can't necessarily feel it there is just a tiny little bit of notchiness there I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera but it is just moving ever such a slight amount um, and that that was um, something that I was you know I'd, I'd expect after you know 50 crashes and motors that are fairly old place might start to develop the bearings might start to get you know uh, worn down and problems start to arise where you do get a little bit of play in the shaft against the bearings and you, you get this little bit of lateral play however I don't expect that from a brand new motor it shouldn't have that there I mean these Emax motors all four of these there is absolutely no play uh, in 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 the shaft at all against the bearings. The tolerances are tight. The quality control is obviously very good uh, with the Emacs motors. Um, you know, they're, they're great. And, and one way to, to really tell, because spinning these on their own, you won't really hear um, if there's any kind of notchiness or a problem with the bearing. One way to tell straight away is when you mount them to your quad. Um, and I've got my uh, QAV. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Um, you can see here um, my QAV. So this is the other the other motor I was saying, which is you know it's the same series, but this is the this is the non pro version. Um, so it has the the hard it's hard wired instead of having the solder tabs, but it is exactly the same spec. I'll explain why that's hanging off there. But as I said, I got um, I had a problem with this having plain the shaft. I got sent a replacement and exactly the same problem exists. Now, I'll show you what a smooth sounding bearing should sound like. If I spin this, you should be able to hear this. So you can hear it's smooth, there's no notchiness. Um, I can feel there's no play. If I try and wiggle this side to side, it feels nice and solid. And you can hear that that, that sound is, is a nice smooth. And, and what new bearing should sound like now if I go to this is one of this is the second one of these that I was sent because this one had this play in the shaft second one arrived exactly the same problem so it might just be that there's a bad batch but if you have a listen to to the the bearing now um, you'll hear hopefully hear what I'm talking about so there's the good one and there's the bad one 
And you hear that rattly, rattly kind of sound. Now it could be that the shaft is not machined very well and it's not making good contact with the inner race of the bearings or one of the bearings. It could be that the bearings are just bad, but that, that rattle and and you know if I if I move that you can kind of see there's a little bit of play you can see the top moving up and down again for a new motor that is just not good enough uh, I'm, I'm not happy with that all the other four the other three sorry were absolutely fine but one of them had the plane I sent uh, basically this one was being RMA I sent another one out and it had exactly the same problem um, at which point um, I was also sent uh, although it was by mistake <laughs> The um, the uh, the the uh, another 220 uh, the, the other 2205 2550 kV so yeah this is the non pro version as I said and this one didn't have any play in the shaft so this is the one I'm actually going with I've just temporarily mounted this on here just to show you the problem and allow you to hear it um, but I've actually got a mismatch of motors now I mean aesthetically a mismatch but they're exactly the same spec and they're the des design wise they're exactly the same. Um, so, so yeah, I, I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed with, with DYS um, and their quality control. It may just be that there's a bad batch and I've now got two of these motors that have this problem. Um, but it's something you should check and if you have found that yours have the same issue, um, to be honest with you, I would RMA them. They shouldn't come like that from you. Um, you shouldn't have that play in, in the shaft. It should, and, and you've got to remember, think about the RPM these things are doing. Um, that's just not going to, that problem's only going to get worse, that noise, and, and that noise and that rattle is, is going to increase over, you know, pretty rapidly, and it's going to also send vibration down, and that, you know, the vibration's the one thing we don't want, you know, that, that, that means we have to start applying low pass filters, uh, you know, to a heavier level than we want to, uh, and on a brand new set of motors, you know, I just don't want that, I want this to be all nice and smooth and, and the way it should be. So there's my thoughts on on these motors. Uh, very mixed opinion. Now, in terms of um, flight performance, as I said, they do come down a bit warmer. Um, not really a problem, but I, you know, it's just not something that I, I'm 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 a fan of against you know the Emax motors, which have come down, you know, completely completely cold and and fantastic so you know they are coming down warmer and it's not a case of me just you know obviously I've retuned and I've um, uh, I always check in the black box that the tune's good everything's running the way it should be um, so yeah they're coming down a little bit warmer in terms of power output there's definitely they're definitely up there they're, there's not really a lot of separation between these and the Emacs in terms of their um, performance um, would I say that they're better performing the Emax? Absolutely not. I'd say they're they're they're, they're kind of on par, um, you know, like for like comparing the twenty uh, twenty five fifty kVs to the twenty six hundred Emaxes and the twenty three hundred to the twenty three hundreds. Um, so you know, th th there's something to think about anyway. But you know, that's that's my opinion. If it was down to me and I had to choose between the two, I would still be going with the Emaxes. The other uh, products I've been looking at, of course, as well, is the, um, if I move the blade out, the new DYS um, XS20As. Now, the one thing that um, DYS have always done a great job with is their speed controllers, and the XM20As have certainly been very, very popular. And, uh, you know, you, you have a look at Quagmire that flies. Um, uh, stats on those you can see they, they've been a great performing uh, ESC so these are the new ones that run the BL Heli S protocol um, I've been running these and the, the nice advantage of BL Heli S is that you can obviously run uh, it will automatically sense detect and switch to uh, multi shot one shot 42 or one shot 40 uh, one shot 42 or one shot 125 um, and in terms of how those have been tuning up, I've been really impressed with them. Um, I've had no problems. Whereas on the other hand, I had the Emax uh, Lightning series and they got recalled and they had problems. So uh, it seems like the best combination at the minute is is actually the um, uh, XS20A um, DYS new speed controllers. These have been great. And uh, the Emax motors, and uh, certainly I, I, I would recommend that combination as opposed to going for the uh, DYS motors and the Emax Lightning series um, brushless ESCs. 
so you know this is this is what you get you, if you want to live on the cutting edge and try out the you know all this new stuff you're 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 gonna yeah, unfortunately you are going to stumble across some of the problems with new stuff um, as it gets tried tested and, and newer revisions come out where where problems get fixed so um, yeah, the XS uh, XS twenty A's have been been great, and they are physically. Um, I'll put some screenshots in there, but you can see they're they're physically um, the same size as as very comparable to something like the little B twenty A, and also the previous XM twenty A's. Um, but they are very fast. I've been very impressed with them, and they're tuning up very well. Um, so that's where we are for now. Um, I will leave you with some flight footage so you can see this flight, uh, this setup in flight um, and see what you make of it. Um, these have been performing like a champ. These have been, you know, I've, I, I won't complain about the flight performance, they've, they've been doing great. It's just some of the other mechanical nuance there that, that has, has annoyed me slightly. It, again, it might just be me, it might just be that I got unlucky, but this is the second replacement of one of these with exactly the same problem as that. The noisy bearings. Um, there's there's something in the the QC there that has, um, needs tightening up, in my opinion, um, so that these come out to a higher a higher standard, much like the the tried tested and and excellent Emax motors. So have a look at the flight footage and, and make up your own mind. Um, but so far, um, that's where we are. So. Sorry, it's taken me a while to get some videos out. Um, there is more on the way, but I have had uh, have had to spend some time with this stuff um, to give you some reliable information, some reliable data. So uh, take care, and I shall see you in the next one.